If somebody were starting a podcast today mm -hmm. and they're brand new, don't know what they're doing, what would be the first five steps there they should take to get started with their podcast, would you say? Um, so number one, I will say, what is your niche? <laughs> Hi, this is Daryl White with Carp Launch Media, and today I have as my guest Candace Dorsey. She's a business coach and the host of the Hello CS Dorsey podcast. Candace, thank you so much for being with me today. Yeah. Hey, thank you for having me. <laughs> no problem. So my first question for you is tell me a little bit more about yourself. So I am what they call, I guess you want to call a multi-passionate person. Um, I love doing all the things. I lover of all things business, online business, um, cat videos, and Disneyland. I'm a huge fan of Disneyland. Um, I I love just helping and supporting and showing people how to start their business, build their business. Um, I've been through it all. You name it, I've actually done it. Like all the way from publishing my own books to being a virtual assistant to a business coach. So it's been a really fun journey. So you kind of touched on it a little bit, like what what kind of started that journey as um, you started to build your business? Kind of was there um, a catalyst or something that kind of moved you forward? So it was for me, I started off, I, I can't, I don't want to go all the way back to when I was a teenager and I always wanted to be a fashion designer and a singer like Selena, okay? <laughs> Big Selena fan. Um, but for me, it was definitely... Once I finished school, so I got my associate's degree online. I kind of wanted to get my associate's degree because I wanted to, you know, appease the parents, appease my mom. So I got that and um, I had to write so much. Like I had to write papers, seemed like almost every other week. Uh, and I kind of got used to that. But during that time, I was actually reading the uh, the Twilight series and Throughout my whole time, um, teenager, everything, I read a lot of adult books. So it had like language and content in there. And um, I wanted to write a book, but I was like, I don't know. But when I read the Twilight series, I was like, this is something that I could definitely do. So I took it on. I wrote my own books. And that's where the bug really started of having an online business and building like something digital. And from then on, I just learned and I grew and it just became like these stepping stones to kind of like where I am now. Awesome. Just now, now I'd like to start a podcast. Like what, what got you to take that? Yeah, this actually is it's really interesting. You mentioned that because it was me starting writing books that kind of like said way into the podcast. So um, when I started writing books, I started getting into the self-publishing world and I was um, I was featuring other authors on my blog. And I got tired of like just sending them the interview questions. They write out the interview questions. They send over their uh, their book information and details and everything. And I said, I want to have a conversation with them. I want to talk to them like like how we are now. I was like, I want to really have a conversation and ask them questions and get to know them. So it kind of started as a really janky process for me. <laughs> It was really weird. Um, of uh, starting on my phone, literally, like I found this weird looking app. I don't know what it was. I can't tell you to this day what it was. Um, I started with this app, and it was this guy. Uh, he was an author, and he was on my blog before. And I started off with him, and I said, "Hey," I said, "Would you be willing to do like an audio interview?" And he was like, "Yeah, of course." So. We did the audio interview, but guess what? I, I did not record. I did not press oh, record. No. <laughs> I know, oh, no. right? Did you have to call him back or what, what happened? Embarrassingly enough, the first interview he did was was audio and I had it on there not thinking that it was like a podcast and I really wanted to get into the podcasting thing. So I wanted to experiment with him, but the good thing is I had a previous audio recording that he had did for me before. So I told him, hey, it didn't record. I'm so sorry about that. I'm like, let's just use your previous one. And he was like, okay, yeah, that's fine. He knew I was new. Um, starting out is good to kind of like 
have someone that know that you're starting off that gives you that grace. So that's how I started off. I started off interviewing other authors and then I found out about Anchor. So, uh, and it was free. So I figured out how to upload the recording and everything for that. And then it just kind of grew from there. So you kind of mentioned Anchor. I'm going to jump around a little bit here. You mentioned Anchor here. So Tell me a little bit more about that. That's an app that helps podcasters, but can you elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, so Anchor is totally free. Uh, I hope it's still free. Uh, that's how I got started. And it gives you some distribution channels, but not all of them. But it is such a great way to get started if you want to really get into it. And if you want to monetize as well, like you can do just like a quick little skit or whatever they tell you to say in the audio you can put it in your audio super easy and then it's based on the clicks and everything and i think i made like 20 cents but i was like <laughs> i didn't get my payout but uh, it's probably still on there but um uh, but it's it's a really really good way and it's so user friendly to just get started awesome and what has kind of kept you going and consistent in doing your podcast episodes, you're in the hundreds right now. And I think that's an achievement for any podcaster, to be honest with you. Yeah. So let me just start off by saying I have not been consistent. Look, It looks like it. It definitely looks like it. But I have not been consistent at all. I've been burnt out. Um, it, it's definitely been a journey. But what kept me going is the requests that I get. Like some requests, I just, I'm like, I just cannot turn them down. Um, I'm like, okay, well, this would help, you know, actually keep it going. Um, and in some requests, I'm like, mm, no, I don't. It, it's very, it's few and far between where I'll say no. Um, but for the most part, I was getting a lot of requests for people to be on my podcast, which was definitely a blessing. Um, that kind of kept me going. It got to the point where I had to, uh, everything was just so sporadic and my months was just filled with just podcast interviews. So I had to condense it down to like, hey, I'm only doing podcasts this week, like podcast interviews this week. So I had to like batch it and concise it down. Then that way I could use my months for other things. But uh, it started to dwindle down the request, but it was so much that I was getting like maybe two to three requests a week to be on my podcast. That wow. was, yeah, that's what's kept me going. All right. So what has kind of then been the biggest um, challenge in kind of starting your podcast? You might have already touched on it, but what's been the biggest challenge that you've had since? Yeah. So for me, the biggest challenge um, has been the perfectionism in me, the editing. That's number one. And then number two is posting on social media. So I wanted to be posted everywhere, but getting those graphics together and then just kind of like scheduling it out and then also doing the editing. I'm doing it by myself now. When I first started off, I had like two VAs like working in my my podcast and I couldn't even afford it. I was like, I can't do it. Then I turned around, narrowed it down to one VA. That was still expensive. That was like $500 a month. And I was like, you know what, Candace? I said, you got to do it on your own, but you have to pace yourself. Um, and then I'm now at the point where I'm like, okay, I'll go ahead and upload it into Descripts, see if there's some things that I need to clean, but I'm not going to sit here and edit all the ums verbatim, 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 because it's like, you have to have some sort of natural. It has to be natural. It has to be a flow. You know, I told, I tell my guests, if you cough, I'm not going to edit that out. You cough, you're human. You're supposed to, you, you know, I want it to be as humanly as possible. So for me, um, it's just finding what works for you. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of a great answer to the challenges. Like the editing sounds like, I, I think I remember that back when I was doing the podcast and I'd like to start again here. Uh, but yeah, editing is kind of a beast a little bit there. Switching it up a little bit. What's kind of been your biz biggest success or like the well, something that has made you feel successful about the podcast or, or business in general? Um, I think it's not about the number of downloads, but it's the people that are still listening. So I don't get like hundreds and hundreds of downloads a week. I get max maybe 20, 30 downloads a week on average. I think for me, we get so caught up in 
you know, the numbers in the matrix that we don't even celebrate and realize that somebody's actually actually listening to you. Like somebody's out there actually downloading your podcast. So that was like right now, that's like my big aha moment. Like I'm like, Candace, you may not have hundreds and thousands of downloads, but you're still successful because people are still downloading. That's the success Absolutely. itself. Absolutely. there, And who would you say has been your favorite guest since you started the podcast? If you had to narrow it down or could give a top three, if you don't want to like be too, too. Particular. Okay. Okay. So, oh my goodness. I have so many top three. Okay. Sally Batters. She's so awesome. I did not write down the episode numbers, but definitely check them out. Uh, Sally Betters, she was my top download for, I think, almost a year. And I was like, what's going on? Like, how come she's constantly being the top download? And what helps so much is when your guest actually create like graphics or promote your podcast as well in that episode what she did was she created a pinterest pin and i stumbled up on it like accidentally she created a pinterest pin in her pin and tagged me and that has just been the driver like nice. drove the traffic to that episode. So Sally Redder, she's really awesome. She's an author uh, as well. She has multiple books. Um, my other one is uh, Suzanne Johnston. She changed her name um, to uh, uh, Philly, uh, Cillians. I think that's her last name. But Suzanne, she is a uh, um, financial advisor and her and I talked for an hour and 30 minutes. That's the only episode and last episode that was an hour and 30 minutes. And I said, we would never do that again. But we talked about so many things about like saving money and, you know, little hacks and things like that. That has been like the ultimate for me. And then um, there's another one. I completely forgot her name. I need to go back and see. But um, but she was the one that told me, girl, you doing too much with your podcast. You just need to let it flow. You're killing yourself. And I'm like, oh my gosh, she's right. She was the one that really inspired me. And it's my earlier episode. So that's probably why I can't remember. It's like in the between the ones and the 20 episodes that I have. But she was the one that really inspired me to like make it be natural and make it be raw. And I has so many people say, I love your podcast. After that episode I had with her say, I love your podcast because it's so raw. It's so, it's natural. So that really kicked things off to like say, Candace, things don't have to be perfect. Nice. Perfection isn't achievable, right? And like, right. it's, yeah, it's just kind right. of an idea. But uh, that being said, outside of your own podcast, is there a favorite podcast that you listen to there or pay attention to? I have so many of them. Um, so I do listen to Amy Porterfield, Online Marketing Made Easy. I listen to uh, Brandy Mao, Serve Scale Soar. And I also listen to uh, Jordan Gill's System Save Me. I, I think I've heard of Jordan Gill's. I, I definitely heard of Amy Porterfield, the middle one. Ha, have not you heard haven't of heard her, of her yeah it, yeah yeah <laughs> but yeah it, sort of that very cool what kind of attracts you to each I, I think I could guess on a couple of the but what attracts you to those different podcasts so for me um Amy Porterfield because she's been there before and she's where I want to be um and she gave so much gold in her podcast i'm also in all her programs literally all in her all her programs um so she's doing something right so i follow her um and for brandy mouse uh skirt sir scale sore it's more of you know if you have a service-based business and you want to scale that she keeps everything so simple less complicated and I love her, her marketing tax on how she market her programs. And I'm pretty much in both her programs as well. And then Jordan Gill, I love her because of the VIP days, because that is definitely the ultimate 
model that I want to do. And plus she's a system girl. So I, I love, love the way she um, brings so much value to her podcast. I'm not in her program. Her program, I think is like six, seven, eight thousand dollars $8,000. I'm not there yet, but I love, love, love the goal that she gives. I, I will have to check out Jordan uh, there, especially because systems, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. that's something I could work on. I think everybody can work on their systems and improve in there a little bit. Well, now let's kind of move on and talk about tools. So you mentioned Anchor a little bit. Is that kind of the only thing that you use to kind of get your podcast out there? Or is that the main thing? Yeah. Tell me about the tools and how, what you use to record. Oh, yeah, definitely. So Anchor was what I started off with. Um, I'm actually with Buzzsprout now because I have more distribution um, um, uh, channels that I can actually leverage. Um, so what I use, and it evolved over time. So starting off, it was always Zoom. Zoom was my go-to because, of course, we know Zoom um, disseminate the audio and the video, and you could just download the audio. So um, Zoom, Zoom is definitely my go-to for recording for guests. I don't deviate from that at all. For editing, it was Audacity. I was using Audacity in the beginning. That is very tech. <laughs> I would say tech heavy in a way. Uh, I was teaching people how to use that. But I was like, uh, it's kind of, it's getting to the point where it was like draining and sucking all my time. Now I switched over to Descripts. I love Descript because... If you do like like how we're doing our um, the podcast now, you can actually edit your transcript, your audio, and the video at the same time. And I like it because I have them do the transcript, and I essentially edit the transcript, which actually helps me to edit the audio. So it's faster for me. I can like see like areas where I'm like saying um too long or if there's gaps or anything like that or if it's a sentence that I want to just get rid of I can just highlight it and delete it and then it's deleted in the audio and if it's a video it's deleted in the video as well so I love Descripts for that so how much does Descripts cost what's the like yeah what's the pricing structure for that I think at one point I was paying 15 a month. I looked at my business statements and I think I was, I'm paying it annually now. I don't remember, but okay. um, it's nothing coming out monthly. But when I was paying for it, it was like, I think roughly about 15 since they are like really um, making a lot of upgrades and it's so much better, so much easier too. Um, I think they probably increase their price. So I'll probably look between like maybe fifteen to seventeen dollars a month to pay for that. Okay, very cool. And you kind of like already answered my next question. I was just asking about the evolution of tools there. So you started off with that Audacity, and now using Descripts, use Anch use to anchor a little bit there. Um, are there any other tools right now that you use to kind of get the the word out, or is that that pretty much the 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 tech? Uh, so that that's, use. yeah, that's the tech part of it. Um, so for social media, I use later. I use later to actually schedule everything out. And then um, Buzzsprout, I was using the headliner app to create that audiogram, the, the snippet. Buzzsprouts actually do that now. So I don't have to use head, the headliner app anymore. I can actually just upload, add my, uh, my show notes into Buzzsprouts. And then if I, I want to do an audiogram or to call it something else, I just click the button. They, they create that for me as long as you upload the graphic as well. And then it's done. I'll kind of go back to the podcast and just the um, people you'd like to podcast. Do you have a wish list of people you'd like to interview? It's always the big names. It's always the big names. And I'm like, my podcast is so mediocre compared to theirs. But one day I will love, I would love to interview Amy Porterfield. Like she is the top. I want her on my podcast. And I know if she was on my podcast, it will blow up. <laughs> I, absolutely. Just got to reach it out there. Yeah. Awesome. Um, now, is there a podcast? Like, I, I, I think I can guess this, but is there a podcast that you would most like to be on there yourself there? Uh, obviously, other than this one, you're achieving your dream today. Yes, <laughs> I am. <laughs> I love it so much. Um, 
Probably, yeah, of course. I would love to be on Amy Porterfield's podcast. Um, probably, it all depends on where I'm going. Like, it all depends on what I'm doing at the time. Um, I always wanted to be somebody's success story. I always want to be one of their success stories and actually tell my story. So for me, it really doesn't matter who it is, as long as I can be on their podcast telling my success story. Hopefully it'll be Amy Porterfield I... in the next, you know, six, six to uh, 12 months there. Yes, yeah? so, yes, yes. Yeah, I yeah. need to add that to my vision board. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, now, we kind of talked a lot of about tools, but what has been the most helpful tool that you've used in the past year there um, out of, you know, Descript, Buzzsprout, there, or Zoom, like, is there a tool that's just like kind of changed and, or made your life a little, the most, a little bit easier? Definitely Descript. Uh, I don't know if I mentioned this before. So of course I'm a systems girl. So how I do my podcast um, I systematize my um, my guest form when they fill it out. So how it works is they go, I send them a link, they fill out the form. Once they fill out the form, I get like three different notifications. So I get a notification. Number one is the email. Um, also, I have them in my ClickUp system. Um, everything from all the information that they entered in. And I do this by using Zapier. Um, then they will go ahead and schedule their, um, their, they'll schedule their interview time. And that's actually planned on my calendar. They have the links. I have it to where so they get the email reminders and everything. So how I have it, I built a flow kind of like around it. Then that way I don't have to keep asking them, Hey, you know, I need this. I need that. It's kind of all built in the process. Now, 80% of the time, people do not read my welcome letter. And I see them come on and their picture like this, um, their video is on. And I'm like, no, they didn't read it. I'm like, it's all audio. If your hair is messed up, yeah, you can turn your camera off. Like, like I don't, I'm not doing the video thing. I'm like right now in my pajamas and in my fuzzy socks. You don't need to, you know, turn on your camera. So I know that they don't read my welcome letter. Those who do read my welcome letter definitely has boosted up my podcast a lot and they definitely have promoted it. And it's been, you know, really awesome. But um, I will say Zapier has been the number one in far as like my, my systems and how I run things. So Zapier, does kind of Zapier integrate to like your... Click up later and all all that. Like, tell me, tell me a little bit more about that, because yeah, yeah. Curious. yeah, not so much later. And you gave me an idea. Maybe I have to look into that so that could be a little more streamlined as well. Um, but Zapier actually link up to my squ my uh, Squarespace. So my I host my website on Squarespace, and you can actually target the form that people fill out, and you can create an automation from Z through Zapier, and that way. Um, I also have it to where so if they fill out the uh, Squarespace form to create a task in ClickUp, and I do that through Zapier as well. So um, everything is connected through Zapier. And I don't pay Zapier monthly fee. It's actually through the free part of Zapier. They give you oh, five wow. zaps. Yeah. Okay. You do yeah. five uh, main zaps uh, a month. Well, not a month, but just five of them. Right. So I kind of like mix and match when I need to do something. I already have five lists. I'm like, which ones am I not using anymore? And I delete it and I add another one just so I can keep it as free. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, getting getting closer in here, but if somebody were starting a podcast today mm -hmm. and they're brand new, don't know what they're doing, what would be the first five steps there they should take to get started with their podcast, would you say? Um, so number one, I would say, what is your niche? Start out with that. Um, don't just go in um, and start a podcast and not know why you're starting it. Who is it for? 
Um, also research what your audience is asking about or talking about before you get started. That is the number one key because that is actually going to help you with your content creation. And how you can do that is actually go into like Facebook groups where your audience is basically hanging out and then search the groups and see what they're asking. Also use um, ask asks the public. I think it's a it's a uh, program that Neil Patel has. Yes, I was going to say yes. Neil Patel. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Like I learned about that about a year ago. That's go ahead. Keep going. <laughs> So use Good. that. That is gold right there because it tells you through Google's and all the search engines what people are asking. So you put in your niche, maybe I think two or three keywords, and then they'll add, they will list everything. Um, also use Reddit. So you can put in your niche and then put Reddit at the end. Use that. And the reason why I'm telling you to do this is because all of this is going to be your content and what you create for your podcast. So you don't have to second guess. Like you can actually use those three platforms and have a whole year worth of content for your podcast and you don't have to worry about it. Oh, that, that was number three. Take what they are asking um, and answer those questions to create a po uh, episodes for it. So that's number three. Start recording on your phone. Like you can download a audio app or a voice memo app and then go from there. Like use that. You don't have to use these scripts. If everybody has Zoom, you can use Zoom and just record talking like this. It doesn't have to be anybody on the other receiving end. You could just record yourself talking um, with no video. You could do that and it automatically downloads to your computer. Use that. Um, as far as editing, if you want to edit, I will say you could do so, but I would say don't do it and just upload it anyway because that's how you shy away from perfectionism because perfectionism will definitely derail what your ultimate message, what you're trying to get out there. You know, if you're sitting there, you know, editing for hours and hours, making it perfect, you could be doing other things. And it's like, oh, think about your audience. If they listen to your podcast and they see how perfectly edited it is, they're going to be like, Oh, I can't compete. Like, it's kind of like one of the things like she's too clean, you know, type of thing. Keep it raw. Go ahead. Upload it. And no one ever listens to your first episode. So if you cough or sneeze, no one's listening. <laughs> so just, just go ahead and do it. Okay. Um, last but not least, upload it in Anchor. And then tell people, hey, I just launched a podcast. You know, um, go ahead and listen to the first four episodes. Always have four or eight episodes ready when you are getting ready to launch. All right. Awesome. And two more questions for you there, okay. and then we'll wrap up. So what would you say is the biggest mistake that you see those who are, are trying to do a podcast a day or just getting started with a podcast? What's the biggest mistake that you see them making? They record the first, they record four episodes and then they stop and they realize how much it's involved and they're like, it's too much. And off the bat, they're like, no one is listening, number one. And then wanting to monetize when no one know who you are. Don't nobody know who you are. Don't think about how to monetize. I see a lot of people asking, well, I want to monetize my podcast or whatever. It's like, unless you're Amy Porterfield or other people like that, it really doesn't make any sense for you to do it. So that lets me know that your intentions right there is only to make money off of it and not to actually deliver your message. So understand what you're doing this for, who it's for, and what's your goal behind. It. And finally, and it's like, how can people get a hold of you or learn more about you there? Yeah, you can definitely just follow me on Instagram. Um, it's CS Dorsey underscore hello. Uh, you follow me on Instagram, and you can also go to my website. Um, I don't do very much on there, but every now and again, I have like some sort of freebie that pops up. So it's uh, hellocsdorsey.com. Well, Candice Dorsey, CS Dorsey, thank you so much for taking the time to, to talk to me today. I really appreciate it, and you have a great rest of your day. You as well, thanks. Bye. All right.